Imagine the simplest atom possible. The hydrogen atom? At its heart sits a single proton, and orbiting around it is one tiny electron. Now, place this atom near a gentle heat lamp that emits light at a constant temperature. Every so often, one of the light rays, what physicists call photons, strikes the electron. The electron absorbs the photon's energy, jumps to a higher orbit, and then, after a moment, releases that energy back as a photon when it drops down to the lower orbit again. What's fascinating is that the electron doesn't move smoothly between these levels. According to quantum mechanics, energy is quantized, discrete, meaning the electron can only exist in specific energy levels, never in between. So it hops. Up when it absorbs a photon, down when it emits one. Now, let me surprise you. This little quantum system, an electron transitioning between two energy states, is mathematically equivalent to one of the most used machine learning models, the logistic regression classifier, the same model that can tell apart pictures of cats and dogs. It sounds absurd at first. How can a hydrogen atom possibly relate to an algorithm trained on images? But as you'll see, both systems are governed by the same underlying probability laws. Both are probabilistic. Both are controlled by energy-like quantities. And both decide between two outcomes one lower state and higher states, the other, cat and dog. But how exactly does this connection emerge? Let's dig deeper. At first glance, these seem like two totally different worlds. On one side, a tiny atom jumping between energy levels, the realm of quantum physics. On the other, a computer trying to decide whether an image belongs to class zero or class one, the realm of data science. To see what could they possibly have in common, let's begin with the physics. When that photon hits the atom, it's not guaranteed to cause a jump. The photon emission and absorption are both probabilistic events. Because photons are emitted randomly by the heat lamp, and because each photon itself is a quantum particle, there's always uncertainty about when or whether a collision will happen. And even if the strike happens, it is not guaranteed that the photon has the exact amount of energy needed for the transition. Similarly, once the electron is excited to the higher energy level, we can't predict exactly when it will drop back down and emit a photon. All we can do is assign probabilities. In statistical physics, the probability of the electron being in a particular state, say, the lower or upper orbit, depends on that state's energy. The formula is beautifully simple. Here. F is the energy of the state multiplied by something called the inverse temperature, denoted by beta. So the probability takes the following form. The quantity Z is just a normalization factor, called the partition function, that ensures all probabilities sum to one. But there's one more trick physicists use. Energy itself isn't absolute, only differences in energy matter. So, we can shift our baseline to make calculations cleaner. Let's define the lower orbit to have energy zero. Also, in physics, we are allowed to arbitrarily change the unit of energy. So, we simply work in a unit in which the upper orbit has energy equal to one. And since we'll soon draw parallels to machine learning, let's rename our energy variable from E to Y. Then, our probability distribution becomes with y equal to 0 for the lower orbit and y equal to 1 for the upper orbit. This may look innocent, but it's the seed of something extraordinary. It's the same functional form used in logistic regression. We just haven't seen it yet. At this point, the question is, how can this physical probability describe how a machine learning model classifies images? Let's find out. To make the bridge clearer, let's compute everything explicitly. We start again from our probability. We said z is the normalization factor, the sum of all possible numerators over the possible values of y. Since y can only be 0 or 1, that means we just need to plug them into the sum and find the partition function. Now we can calculate the expected value of y, which in physics represents the average energy level. How often the electron is in one of two possible orbits on average. After expanding the sum explicitly, we arrive at a simple equation for the expected energies. This is a beautiful result. 
It's exactly the sigmoid function that appears in logistic regression. If you plot it as a function of beta, you'll see a smooth S-shaped curve. At very high positive beta, which means very low temperature, the expected energy approaches zero. The electron almost always stays in the lower orbit. At very negative beta, expected value of Y approaches one. The electron almost always stays in the upper orbit. Note that except in a very small range around beta equal to zero, the expected energy almost always has exact two distinct values of zero and one. Now here's the connection. In machine learning, the expected value of Y is the model's prediction. If a mathematical model can predict zero when the condition looks like a cat and predict one when the condition looks like a dog, that model will be a machine learning classifier. So this simple quantum system with an electron flipping between two states based on energy and temperature is doing exactly what a logistic regression model does, flipping between two classes based on the temperature of the heat lamp, which plays the role of the pixel values of images in the machine learning problem. Let's go one step deeper and make the correspondence explicit. In physics, we said the expected value of Y depends on beta. In machine learning, the equivalent quantity that controls the shape of the sigmoid curve is the linear combination of input features. In our example, these are the pixel values of images. Here, each X sub I is one feature, one pixel in our example and each W sub I is a free parameter of the model that needs to be learned. When we substitute this expression for beta into our physics-inspired probability, we obtain the probability distribution for the logistic regression in machine learning. And correspondingly, the expected value of Y, the cat or dog classes, becomes the so-called sigmoid function. This equation is the core of logistic regression. The sigmoid function takes the weighted sum of pixel values of an image, squashes it between 0 and 1. If 0 comes out, the prediction is that the image is a cat. If 1, the image is a dog. In our analogy, the electron's two energy levels correspond to the two possible classes, cat or dog. The inverse temperature beta corresponds to the weighted sum of the pixel values of images, computed as the dot product of W and X. And the expected energy corresponds to the prediction of the classifier. So the physics and the machine learning systems are just like two translations of a novel. And here is the dictionary. What was temperature in the physical world becomes the data set in machine learning. The environment that determines how the model's parameters adapt. And what was energy in physics becomes the classes in machine learning. One remaining question is, how do we determine the values of the free parameters W in a machine learning model? The answer lies in minimizing a quantity known as the loss function, a measure of error computed over a large data set. In our case, that data set could consist of thousands of labeled images where each picture is already known to be a cat or a dog. In earlier episodes of this series, we examined loss functions and discussed how they can be minimized using a technique called gradient descent. If you haven't seen those yet, I recommend watching them to learn how this process leads us to the optimal parameters for the cat-dog classifier we explored in this episode. Let's now step back and ask another question. What does the physics-machine learning equivalence of this episode mean for the bigger picture of physics and machine learning? It means we can stack together many classifiers that we discussed in this episode, letting them interact layer by layer and end up with what we call deep neural networks. We will get back to this subject later in this series. Let me just briefly describe what is going to happen. Each neuron in a deep neural network is just a tiny probabilistic switch, mathematically identical to our hydrogen atom classifier, deciding whether to activate or not based on an input from the neurons in the previous layer and thousands of these switches form the intricate hierarchical structures that power modern AI. So, the same mathematics that describes an atom absorbing and emitting light can provide the basis for how deep neural networks learn from data. So, a neural network making predictions can be thought of as a universe of atoms jumping between energy states. The same mathematics translated differently in the two realms of physics and AI. 